foggy weather on the field with the rain and them having a short week playing at Denver in just seven days. Numerous starters are out tonight. Cam Newton, Thomas Davis, Luke Keekley, Michael Orr, Philly Brown, Ted Ginn, a number of them, and it makes sense. You can't risk them getting hurt tonight. We're going to see Joe oh, Webb take yeah. the start. Welcome back to Bank of America Stadium where the score Panthers up 15-0. Libby Wiesman here with running back Jonathan Stewart. Your young guys out here tonight have been running all over the place. How would you say Cameron Artis Payne and Brandon Wigger have done tonight? Speaking of Denver, you guys are there next week in just seven days. It's a short time to prepare for them. How excited are you to actually go against another team that means something? This is two weather delays and four games in the preseason. How much does it change in the run game with all the rain? The thing the Panthers really like about Vernon Butler is he's so physical and the speed for his size is almost unbelievable. It's almost like you have to see it because you wouldn't believe it. He's very physical. He told me back during training camp that the hardest part of his position in transitioning to the NFL is working on his his technique and his hip work guys welcome back to Bank of America Stadium Panthers up over the Pittsburgh Steelers 15 0 with 548 to play in the third quarter and just before halftime wide receiver Kevin Norwood went down with a hip injury he is out for the remainder of the game guys Libby what'd you see in that first half you guys it was a physical game we saw a lot of field goals and we know coach Rivera is not exactly going to be pleased with getting to the red zone and not scoring there of course he likes the points with the field goals but talking about the offensive line real quick we know who the five starters are and we know who they who they are and will be during the season but it's the reserves we're looking for we've seen the defenders from the Steelers get to Joe Webb a little bit tonight so I know they're going to be looking at that offensive line very closely back to you guys guys an injury update we saw late in the third quarter offensive lineman Jordan Rigsby go down he's on the table behind the Panthers bench with ice on that right knee he's out for the game his mom was actually sitting in the section behind Behind the bench where he's is now on the table came down to offer him words of support. He's visibly upset as anybody would be injuring that right knee, but he is out for the game, guys. Go to Libby Weisman. She's on the sideline with one of the leaders of the secondary, Kurt Coleman. You're already starting it, Kurt. You were just on the bench waving that towel. You're like a cheerleader today. Uh, I've been a, I've been a coach first, um, but uh, yeah, I got to be a cheerleader. I mean. You have two young corners in your position group right now. How are they doing and coming along now that you've seen them in four preseason games? McDermott was talking the other day about how it's mentally challenging to prepare for essentially two games for some of these young guys playing for tonight, but also looking forward to Denver. How do you balance that? With a short week getting ready for Denver, does it pose any challenges for you? Welcome back to Carolina Panthers football. It's halftime at M&T Bank Stadium. I'm Libby Leesman back in the Charlotte studio. Panthers have been at training camp for a few weeks now, but prior to the start of heading down to Wofford, players got an opportunity to get away from the football field. For all pro linebacker Luke Keekley, that meant fishing in the mountains with family. Luke, an outdoorsman at heart, it's something he and his two brothers enjoy growing up with their parents in Cincinnati. As for on the field, Luke is healthy and looking for his fourth straight first team all pro season. More from our Charlotte studios. We'll take a look at the highlights and first half stats. But before we do, here's a word from your local Panthers station. Welcome back to our Charlotte studios as the Panthers and Ravens are opening their preseason at M&T Bank Stadium. Now let's head back up to Baltimore where Mick and Mike are standing by to analyze the first half. Guys. Thank you, Libby. Here in the locker room with Panthers defensive lineman Charles Johnson, who will be the honorary keep pounding drummer for today. What does that mean to you? Here with Chad Canal, seven-time champion crew chief for Jimmy Johnson. You just put on number seven. What does it mean to you guys? Kemba, keep pounding around here means more than just a couple of words. It, it speaks to what people have gone through and what they've overcome. What does keep pounding mean to you? I think the nice thing about the Senior Bowl, too, is it, get, it gets guys out of their comfort zone. They're not around their coaches. They're not around their teammates. They're forced to kind of adapt to the situation they're in and use other players to their advantage. So I think it's a good opportunity for some young guys to showcase what they've got before the combine. Maybe there's a long list of guys that have certainly gone on to be great players in the NFL and moved on to get paid in other places. Yeah, absolutely. And when you think about how short in the grand scheme of things Wilkes has been here with the Carolina Panthers, he's already had quite a few guys kind of graduate from the Wilkes School of being a defensive back. You think of Captain Munnerlyn, Mike Mitchell, Josh Norman, and now he's got two rookies, two rookies that he really has a, a nice opportunity to kind of create them into what he wants them to be. They came in so young and, and just so eager to learn that he, he really has a really unique opportunity to kind of take them and hone their craft. And like he said in that clip, every action has a reaction. That's something he's 
he's expressed for years and years and years to his guys, but he's a guy that really knows how to take a guy with some talent and to develop him into an NFL cornerback. It was a tough afternoon for the Carolina Panthers, but with every loss comes room to improve. Libby Wiesman here with a Panther news update. We're just a few minutes away from Panther Talk Live from right here inside Bank of America Stadium. Mick Mixon, Eugene Robinson, and Jim Zoki are all on hand and ready to go. Quarterback Cam Newton is the definition of a dual threat quarterback. He can run the ball, which he did for the Panthers only touchdown of the day, and he can pass the ball, which he did for more than 200 yards. But Newton was sacked eight times through three interceptions and receiver Kelvin Benjamin was targeted just once all afternoon and the pass was incomplete. It'll be a long tape study for this Panthers offense. There's no denying that the Panthers have struggled to create a pass rush so far this season, but that wasn't the case yesterday. On Arizona's opening drive, defensive tackle Star Latulale sacked quarterback Carson Palmer, forcing a fumble and setting up the scoop and score touchdown for linebacker Thomas Davis. The first touchdown of his lengthy NFL career. That sack was just the first of eight on Palmer, and it was the kind of performance from this dominant defensive line that everyone has come to know. Despite eventually putting up 38 points, it was a slow start for this Panthers offense. On the first drive of the game for Carolina quarterback Cam Newton, he was sacked on third down at the New Orleans 43, forcing Andy Lee to punt. Second possession, three and out. Third possession, Newton was sacked on second and eight, eight forcing third and long, which ended up being an incomplete pass. Panthers gave up a touchdown when Saints cornerback Sterling Moore picked off Newton in the end zone. And the Panthers know they can't get to the red zone and not put points on the board. It wasn't the Sunday the Panthers were hoping for on the road in Atlanta. Libby Wiesman here with a Panther News update. In just a few minutes, Panther Talk will be live from right here inside Bank of America Stadium. Mick Mixon, Eugene Robinson, and Jim Zoki are all standing by and we'll hear from head coach Ron Rivera. The Panthers defense had their fair share of struggles on Sunday against the three and one Falcons. Atlanta wide receiver Julio Jones seemed unstoppable with 12 receptions for 300 yards and a touchdown, leaving the Panthers secondary wondering how to stop it. Despite allowing 48 points, the most points allowed all season, the defense never gave up and they know there's a lot to learn from this loss. Libby, you know, when I'm listening to that, I think of it's going to be basically from Dave Gettleman on down. You better get your stuff right. It's almost like these players are going to hear that. They're going to know, hey, is he talking about me? So these guys have to be thinking, what do I need to do to improve? Yeah, and you know some of these guys were listening to the press conference and kind of wondering, oh, my gosh, he was just talking about me. He didn't say my name, but that's who the, he was talking about. And the one thing we didn't see in the clip, but Gettleman said over and over in his press conference that he wants to make sure, and he asks himself this every day, does he give Rivera the right players to get the job done? And that's something he's going to discuss in the offseason. The bye week has come and gone, and the Panthers wasted no time getting back to work first thing Monday morning. The Panthers know they face a challenge sitting at 1-5, and five, but there are 10 games left in the regular season to get things back on track. It won't be easy, but it's certainly not mission impossible, especially as Coach Rivera notes, two teams in the NFC South lost this weekend. It's the first Monday of the regular season, which means football is officially back. Libby Wiesman here with your Panther News Update. We're just a few minutes away from Panther Talk live from right here inside Bank of America Stadium. Mick Mixon, Eugene Robinson, and Jim Zoki will all be on hand and we'll hear from head coach Ron Rivera. These two look really fun to watch. I'm going to enjoy my Sunday, Libby, watching these two matchups. You guys, I'm super excited about the later game to see what Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, and the two rookies with the Dallas Cowboys have to bring to the table. These are two teams that nobody really knew what was going to happen with them at the beginning of this season. Dallas was obviously without a quarterback when Tony Romo went down and then Green Bay just wasn't getting anything going and, and the two teams have really just done a phenomenal job. I think that's going to be a tough close battle. Sunday's 2017 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs is going to sting for a while, but not too long as the Panthers gear up to take on the New Orleans Saints in just three days. Libby Wiesman here with a Panthers news update. In just a few minutes, Panther Talk will be live from right here inside Bank of America Stadium. Mick Mixon, Eugene Robinson, and Jim Zoki will hear from head coach Ron Rivera and former Panthers defensive lineman Damian Lewis and offensive lineman Kevin Donnelly will stop by. The Panthers went into the locker room at halftime feeling pretty good with a 17-3 lead in front of their home crowd. But what happened
happened in the second half is going to be tough to move on from. Late in the third quarter, the Panthers offense had a 20 play drive that lasted more than 10 minutes. That clock eating drive ended with the team having to punt. And in the fourth quarter, the Panthers four possessions ended like this. Cam Newton throwing an interception returned for a touchdown, a punt, another punt, and a Kelvin Benjamin fumble recovered by the Chiefs. And the coaching staff, they've had a lot of continuity, but Libby, you know, with Steve Wilkes, it's a guy that's gotten interest as being a head coach around the league. He's been the assistant head coach to, to Coach Rivera now for a couple of years. So uh, I guess the Panthers got to feel really good about him stepping into that role. They do. And if you think about some of the secondary guys that uh, Steve Wilkes has groomed over the years, you think back to guys like Captain Munerlin, like we were talking about earlier. And then you see the two rookies this year. We saw the departure of Josh Norman last year. But Wilkes is a guy that really knows how to handle any sort of situation. He's got great insight into the game. He does a really good job not only relating to the players, but explaining to them what they need to do on a level that maybe younger guys like some rookies with James Bradbury and Daryl Worley will better understand. I, I think he's going to take this position if and when he does and really do a phenomenal job with it. Quick injury update. Linebacker David Mayo and cornerback Daryl Worley both did not finish Sunday's game and were being evaluated for a concussion. And linebacker Luke Keekley remains in the concussion protocol. Stick around and after the break, Panther Talk will be live only on the Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Linebacker Thomas Davis is continuing to show fans that age is, well, nothing but a number. 11 tackles, one sack, one interception, a forced fumble, and a pass deflected in the win against the Rams. Davis's timely interception no doubt helped the Panthers secure the win, and it was a play he was ready to make to quiet the doubters. Libby, your idea, what, do you think they'll be able to keep all those guys if they had to target just one or two? Who do you think those guys are? It's impossible to keep all 15 unrestricted free agents. When you mentioned K or K1 Short, um, Mario Addison. AJ and Klein. AJ Klein is another one. And also, you wonder with AJ Klein, Sean McDermott, maybe AJ is in Buffalo next year. There's a lot of things that can happen. Also, Mike Remmers is a free agent. Uh, Ted Ginn, we don't know what's going to happen in the free agency market, but I do think Gettleman will make it a priority to sign some of the guys and if not franchise tag somebody in order to keep them here as a Carolina Panther. There's a lot of familiarity with Libby, and I think that helps this defense. I think there's also a sense of comfort, too. Charlotte is home. This is where his family is. This is where he's raised his kids, and he's been, you know, a part of the Charlotte community. We're, I've, we've been to West Charlotte to see their football uh, field groundbreaking, and you saw the community and the reaction when he was there. People are just naturally drawn to him because they know he gives back to where he's from, and where he's from is where he's, like, at, where he's at right now. I think it's a good opportunity, a good situation for him. I, I think it's just the job for him whether he takes it or not. Two, Deshaun Watson will be the number one overall draft pick for this next NFL draft. I am saying false. Deshaun Watson will not be the number one pick in the NFL draft, and I'll tell you why. I don't think the Cleveland Browns are going to draft a quarterback with their number one pick. I think they're going to get... ball. I think they're going <laughs> to give RG3 one more year. He was banged up this year, missed part of the season. I think they're just going to go out on a limb. They're notorious for drafting picks that have been bust. That make I, no sense. I, that too. <laughs> so I, I just don't see it. I, I see no way that the Browns could possibly draft Deshaun Watson. And let the negotiating begin. The Panthers have 15 unrestricted free agents they'll soon be making decisions on. Of those 15, five are defensive linemen that contributed this season. We know general manager Dave Gettleman doesn't negotiate during the season, so look for him to get busy right away. Stick around, and after the break, Panther Talk will be live right here on the Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. It was just nine hours ago when the Panthers landed after their Monday night win in Washington, but that didn't stop some of the guys from coming out to a local hospital to support the kids. After the guys left CMPD, it was off to station four where the guys got into a little bit more than they bargained for. On the field, Charles Johnson has been making tackles for over a decade, but it's what he's tackling off the field that impacts so many more people. Charles knows affordable housing is hard to come by, so he and his partners decided to provide it. The guys spent time with those that protect them, those that support them, and well, those that look up to them. 